If I had merely told you that Better Call Saul would introduce a new villain that would push the mastermind Gus Fring to his limit, you'd probably picture someone equally as smart, strategic, and sinister. And if I then added that they were Tuco Salamanca's cousin, you'd probably recalibrate and picture someone angry, violent, and out of control. A complete monster. But instead, this is who we should have been picturing. Created by Peter Gould and Vince Gilligan and performed by Tony Dalton, Lalo Salamanca would redefine our expectations of how a villain should look and behave. Someone that feels straight out of a comedy, yet possesses a twisted disconnect that allows him to perform unmerciful acts of violence. Tony Dalton had predominantly acted in Mexican films and television series until Better Call Saul offered him the opportunity to play Lalo. This character could have been played a variety of different ways, cold, brooding, aggressive, calculated, professional. But at the age of 43, he would serve us up something completely fresh and innovative that would earn him his first ever Screen Actors Guild nomination. So let's examine what made Tony Dalton so captivating as Lalo Salamanca. While the writers obviously had a huge role to play here, for me, there are three keys that made this performance stand out even more. Let's start with smiling. Tony plays Lalo as someone that always leads with a warm, inviting smile. He's consistently in a good mood, which Dalton demonstrates by having Lalo singing to himself while he works. All of this makes him seem a little bit simple-minded, which lowers our guard to underestimate him. But as the series progresses, and we see how cold-blooded he is, with a complete dismissal for the value of human life, his persistent smile stops being a source of comfort and starts being a source of stress. As really his smile masks his intentions, it's a bluff, he's impossible to read. So Tony's decision to persistently grin reframes the psychology of the character. Now we start realizing that Lalo is a psychopath that just views all of this as a game, a source of amusement. Take this moment as an example. And if he doesn't like me, Ah, you'll be fine. Nacho is visibly worried about what might happen to him if Don Eladio doesn't like him, and Tony shows us this flash of violent potential washing past Lalo's face, which sells us on the idea that Lalo doesn't really care what happens to Nacho. If we look at it again, it communicates that he's seen Eladio slaughter a man he didn't like before, and this is clearly a positive memory for him. This makes Lalo's relaxed demeanor more eerie, there's actually no bad outcome for him. If Nacho dies, it may not be ideal, but that doesn't mean it will affect him emotionally. He'd probably react the same way he did earlier, when Nacho tries to earn his trust by running into an apartment right before the authorities bust in and confiscate their drugs. Lalo shows zero concern for his well-being and instead views this as a piece of entertainment. Notice how animated Tony plays it. He's completely present, a big toothy smile, illuminated eyes bouncing around. And this detail really matters. He starts tossing snacks into his mouth, like popcorn in a movie theater. And it doesn't matter who it is, whether the stakes are high or low. He plays this way with Gus the exact same way. Simultaneously acting like his friend to sniff out a rat, and openly letting him know that he's onto him. A more guarded and strategic character like Gus would sit back and observe, then execute a plan based on his assessment, but by playing Lalo as someone so fearless that he'll just smile in his face obnoxiously, not caring enough to even conceal his suspicions, it makes a huge difference to the tone of the show, as there's no one else quite like him in the Breaking Bad universe. Sure, there's light-hearted characters and there's violent characters, but they've never had someone who's both. Lalo enjoys watching Gus lie, he enjoys chasing him around, and there's nothing more dangerous than a man who enjoys his work, as he has no incentive to ever stop. But unlike most characters in the show, Tony chooses not to really show us Lalo thinking. Instead he makes him constantly in the moment, and bouncing off his intuition. 
and that's why he feels more dangerous. Gilligan and Gould have still written him as a smart and strategic character, but Tony plays him as someone that doesn't need to stop and strategize. He just does things based on his immediate instinct, making him harder to predict. He might be about to kill you any moment, and if he does, it will not alter his mood whatsoever. He'll still be smiling. The next key is the physicality of the character. Lalo has a completely different energy to every other character in the show. From the very beginning, we're introduced to him blasting Mexican music as he cooks. He's the definition of active. While Nacho stays still demonstrating his discomfort, Lalo is contrasting this by buzzing around. He's always doing something. If he's not cooking, he's working on his car. But make no mistake, he's a force of nature. He never stops. It's a larger-than-life performance, a touchy-feely and oddly intimate character with no value for personal space. Most of Dalton's movements are big. He has an active neck, cranking his head to get a good look at everyone and everything. He also uses a lot of hand gestures, whether his conversation is serious or light-hearted. And he points excessively even puts his feet up to show how utterly relaxed he is, no matter the context. He's never worried, because he knows you'll have to find a way to get him what he wants, or you'll pay for it. He's a true showman, even using the table as a drum. Drum roll, please. If you put Ron Burgundy, Dick Dastardly, and Anton Chigurh in a blender, you'd get something similar to Lalo Salamanca. I know that sounds ridiculous in almost every way, but the reason Lalo stands out so much is that Tony is playing him in a comedic tone. Michael, is that you? This just isn't what anyone expects the villain to sound like. If you listen closely, there's a little Ron Burgundy in there. Werner Ziegler? Rick, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. 26 now, according to Mrs. Ziegler. The only way to bag a classy lady is to give her two tickets to the gun show. When it comes to Dick Dastardly, yes, he also has a mustache, but it's his animated movement and the persistent smile and laughter. <laughs> and with Anton Chigurh, it's about Lalo's posture and the way he walks. Notice how Lalo usually has his hands held down by his waist. It's very open body language, completely defenseless. It's a small detail, but this communicates that he has no fear for his life. Because of who he is and the power he commands, he feels untouchable. On top of that, given we know Lalo is happy to kill with those same hands, his pose is even more threatening, which is why they often shoot Tony's hands dangling there in the foreground as the other person talks under pressure. Most characters have their hands in their pockets, or fold their arms or hold something, but Lalo just walks up with his hands out, ready to take what he wants and do what he wants. And why wouldn't he feel this way? When he enters your home, it's his home now. No one ever restrains him. Even when Jimmy tells him he shouldn't tap the fish tank, once he's not getting what he wants from the conversation, he goes back to tapping the fish tank, and this time Jimmy knows he can't say anything. So this demeanor Tony has created is really a power flex. It suggests it's his world, and you're just living in it. For now, at least. It's thrilling to watch, because there are two distinct sides to Lalo. Smiling, warm, and active, and murderous psychopath. And you never know which instinct he's going to follow next. He can turn on a dime. And that leads into our final key, the stare. Lalo has a psychopathic, unsettling stare. Sometimes looking like he's being possessed by a bloodthirsty demon from the inside. Take this moment as an example. He calls Hector to inform him of his plan, and he hears a clicking sound that suggests the phone is tapped, ruining his element of surprise. Now Dalton utilizes his eyes with these micro movements to show an unexpected feeling is taking over. And then he hangs up, because the enraged feeling has captured him now, and he must lash out. In all of his human interactions, Lalo loves eye contact, creating uncomfortable intimacy with whoever he's engaging with. But the more you learn about him, the more intimidating and deranged the stare becomes. 
When he offers Jimmy the chance to be friends with the cartel, he leans forward slowly and gawks at him with no blinking. The intensity of his unbroken gaze is a blend of seduction and intimidation, trying to lure him into doing what he wants by offering him something he wants. And when he distrusts Jimmy's story as to why he's late delivering the money, he looks at him from afar, then strolls up close again to get a good look in his eyes. He then looks him up and down, continues to stare. At this point we know Jimmy is lying, and we know Lalo suspects it, so the tension is mounting. But then Dalton follows an instinct and switches to a light tone to keep us on our toes. And later in that same episode, we see the power of the stare in action. When Lalo enters Jimmy and Kim's home, armed, he sits down and asks Jimmy to tell him what happened in the desert, while just staring at him with this warm, welcoming smile. He seems in a good mood at first, but now it becomes clear it's a poker game to see who folds first. Lalo is using his stare as an interrogation tactic, asking the same question again and again and just watching him lie up close. And this scene works so well because Dalton has built our expectations of this character as a live wire over the last season. But now he's not active, he's not using any hand gestures, he's just sitting perfectly still and staring directly into his soul. And the longer this scene drags out, the more stressed and fearful we become, as we can feel Lalo's eyes on us, just like Jimmy does. His murderous intentions become clearer and clearer with each passing second, and Dalton does it all with just a look. The Breaking Bad universe is famous for its morally ambiguous characters, even transforming its protagonist from a hero to a villain by the end of the series. But Tony Dalton entered that universe at the latest stage of any cast member, and somehow still managed to produce one of the most memorable performances in either series. With a charming, funny, energetic, terrifying villain, who possesses both comedic and murderous instincts in equal measure. You can never predict what Tony Dalton's Lalo Salamanca is going to do next, because it feels like he's not even sure. He's just going to trust whatever feeling grabs him most intensely and enjoy the ride. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more of it, please do consider supporting me on Patreon, as it really does make a difference to how much content I can pump out. Or if you can't afford that, then simply like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to help the algorithm do its thing. 